Hey friends, it's Robin. Welcome to my fall reset. I knew that I wanted to do one of these seasonal reset videos very similar to what I do at the end of every month, but I didn't know at the time when I came up with this video what I wanted to exactly do in this monthly reset or what I wanted it to look like. So I've been filming clips for the last couple of weeks and now editing me has the really fun task of figuring out how to make this a watchable video. Similar to what I did going into September for that monthly reset, I'm going to kind of talk through the different things that we're going to do throughout this video. I have organized these into sections and so the clips that I'm going to put in here aren't necessarily in timeline order but I put them together in the categories in which they made sense. So I will have timestamps for everything down below. They're gonna be broken up into categories and then individual things. It's gonna be a lot of timestamps. Hopefully this video isn't an hour long. But I ended up coming up with just a whole bunch of things that I wanted to do going into fall. Part of the reason why I knew that I wanted to do one of these is I live in a place where the weather changes quite drastically with the seasons. And so there's a lot of things that I need to do anyways going into a new season on top of like the decorating and stuff that comes along with fall. A whole new wardrobe needs to be brought out because our weather has drastically changed already. Um, I wake up in the morning and it's like 40 degrees. So I had to bring out all of my warmer clothes. And so I thought it would be fun to do a reset video. Plus these videos are super popular right now. I thought it would be fun to film it, give it a slight planner bookish spin. So let's talk about all the things that we're going to do in this video. The first section is all of the things that I did to prep our home. So first I go through my closet and my clothes and I gather up all of the summer things that I need to pack away and bring out all of the winter and fall things, which is always a sad <laughs> moment. I don't know why. It's not sad putting away the winter clothes. It's always sad putting away my summer clothes. If you don't live somewhere where your four seasons are all drastically different, I envy you. And then I went through and I updated all of my mugs. I am a mug hoarder. I would like to use the word collector. It's further than that at this point. And then I went right into decorating. Usually I will put up fall decorations first and then do Halloween decorations, but I waited until like September 20th to decorate. I did it all together. So we have a fall Halloween mashup. I not only decorated our house, particularly our living room and dining room, but I decorated my shelves as well.
is going to be all about content. I'm going to print out all of my kits for the fall. I'm going to do some content prep for October and November. I'm going to make fall templates 
And then I'm going to take those templates and redo them for myself. Put my fall TBR in there because I decided to make a really odd numbered TBR. I would be up waiting for you if you had to leave. I would wait a lifetime if you were at sea. I just want to say that I feel that my love is real. Maybe we should hurry up and seal the deal. about goals and plans for the fall. I will talk some more specific goals in my monthly resets at the end of the month, but I wanted to give kind of like a big picture going into 
the fall season. Let's talk about life stuff first. So first is we host Thanksgiving every single year. I have like a really weird relationship with this holiday, which I think a lot of people do. However, it is like the one time a year that we can get the majority of our families together. My husband loves cooking, so we host every year and we are most likely going to host again. So we need to come up with a game plan for that. Every year we kind of like open up our house to anyone that doesn't have somewhere to go. So we usually have at least a handful of friends who can't make it to their family or whatever who come by. And so it's just, it's always a really good time. And I kind of want to mix it up and try like a new recipe or something this year. Tied into that, um, my sister-in-law and her husband and my nephew moved out to Colorado earlier this year and they will not be back in time for Thanksgiving. However, they are coming back in early December and so I really want to plan something fun to do with them. We haven't seen them since they moved and our nephew is one now and so I haven't seen him since he was like a baby and now he's like acting like a person. I want to come up with something fun to do with them. So I need I need to brainstorm that. And then the last general life thing is more of a goal than a plan, but I really want to prioritize spending time outside, whether that's going for a walk at some point or sitting outside with the dogs. We're getting to the time of the year where being outside is going to become less and less comfortable. And so I want to make sure that I'm utilizing the time left because I have terrible sad every single year. And so I want to I want to enjoy this for as long as I can. I'm gonna go into content things. First is I really want to aim to do those Sunday reset sprints two to three times a month. As much as I would like to say I'm gonna do them every single Sunday, that's not realistic for my life. I want to make sure that I'm doing them, but I don't want to overwhelm myself to where I feel like I have to put aside other things in order to make it happen. So Two to three times a month is the goal. So keep your eye peeled. I will try to post them as early in advance as I can. Although today's a Thursday and I still haven't posted that I'm gonna do them this Sunday. So next goal is to keep up with planning and scheduling and hopefully get ahead. One of the really big projects that I undertook in September was planning out all of my content through the end of the year. I just mapped out with post-it notes all of the videos and things that I wanted to do. I took some post-it notes and I just wrote all of the ideas that I had, dropped them into a pile, and then started to lay them down on these calendars. And once I did that, it kind of gave me um, a peek into the fact that I have content scheduled all the way through the end of February. And by doing that, it made me realize how behind I was on filming my content. I was seeing that I had mapped out in my head that I wanted to do these vlogs, but I wasn't taking into account that I needed to read those books ahead of time in order to post that vlog. And so I was always falling behind on my content because I wasn't scheduling in the time to prep for said content. And so I ended up having to completely overhaul my September TBR, readjust. It was a lot of work. <laughs> But I'm really glad I did it because now I have a roadmap for everything. So I want to make sure that I keep up with that and am staying on my scheduling, not just like on the schedule that I've set, but continue to schedule things in that way so that I always know when I need to get certain things done and filmed and ready so that I can build in things around that. And I'm hoping that by doing this, I'm able to start getting ahead on things. It hasn't happened quite yet, but I really have just kind of gotten into the groove of this. And so I'm hoping that now that I have all of that done and laid out, now I can start doing the editing part since I've gotten ahead on the filming. I need to get ahead on the editing part. So that is probably my biggest goal for fall. Tied into that, want to start prepping for 2024 content. That doesn't feel real. Um, but I, I need to start prepping for 2024. Start building my 2024 TBRs, my like most anticipated, my five-star reads, all of that stuff. And that just, it doesn't feel right, but I need to do it, which is also leading into, I need to finalize my 2024 planner lineups. I have been messing around with some different layouts and ideas. I am waiting for one final release, maybe two final releases. There will be a 2024 planner lineup this year. I attempted to do one last year and 
I ended up scrapping a ton of my end of the year content last year because I wasn't feeling very well. It's going to be part of my planner series. So there will be a 2024 planner lineup so you can see everything that I'm going to be using in 2024. And then the final thing, which is tied into that, is I want to explore a reading journal. I made a bit of an impulse purchase and bought three Archer and Olive journals in three different sizes. So I got the large one. I think this is their, I can't remember. This is a big one. This is like their standard journal. And then I got the square one. Do I have a plan for these? No. But I, I knew that I wanted to explore a reading journal for next year. And I wasn't sure what size. And so I got a bunch of sizes. So I might do some experimenting in here and try to figure out how to do a reading journal. One of my issues with doing a reading journal has always been I read too many books. I can't journal like 200 and some books. It's too much. So I need to figure out how to do it in a way that I, I enjoy. And then the final section is going to be my seasonal favorites. I know a lot of people talk about like movies and TV shows and music and all of that stuff. I'm not that person. I don't watch a lot of movies. I don't watch TV, especially new movies and new TV. And I'm very stuck in my ways with music. So I listen to like the same artists over and over again. The only new music I listen to is an artist that I already love releasing a new album. I'm gonna break my things up into four categories. So first is going to be stuff. Then we're going to talk about the things that we did, like my favorite things that we did, some milestones. The last one is going to be my favorite books of fall. No, my favorite books of summer. Let's talk about stuff first. I do have one movie that I did watch and is a favorite, which was the Red, White, and Royal Blue movie. I have watched this movie three times. Despite the changes that it made, it captured the heart of the movie so perfectly. And they legitimately kept lines from the book in this movie. And I just, I think it was fantastic. I loved it. I now want to watch it again because I'm talking about it. And then I do have one album on here, which isn't a new album, okay, but there were additions to it. And that's Sonder by Dermot Kennedy, who is probably my favorite artist. If you have ever seen my like Spotify end of the year wrap ups, this is pretty much the only artist that is on there because I listen to his albums on repeat. Not only do I listen to his albums on repeat, but I use his albums for yoga playlists as well. So I can never get enough. And then the last thing for this category is all of the new stuff that I got for my office, including my new office setup. I am obsessed with my new office setup. Everyone thinks that it is such an odd choice because I have a corner desk not in the corner of my office. One of these days, I swear to you, I'm going to show you this office. But not only did I get new desks and a new setup, but I got a new monitor, a new webcam, a keyboard. I got a new microphone. And then, of course, I got my new laptop, which is one of my new prized possessions. It was a lot of expensive purchases, but it was really, really worth it. It's made not only like my content and stuff easier, I have my own computer now, which I haven't had in eight years. So that's all of the things that were seasonal favorites. The things that we did first, we went to a bunch of farmers markets. We have farmers markets everywhere here. I do technically live in a farming state, so that makes sense. There's one really large farmers market, like halfway between me and my parents. And so we met there quite a bit and it was lovely. And then the other thing that we did was we took this really big Chicago trip. I say big, Chicago is not that far. Okay, so it wasn't like a big trip. Like we went somewhere far, it's like hour and a half. But we went down there and we spent the whole day down in Chicago. We went to the aquarium and then we went and saw Chelsea play against, who did they play against? I think it was Dortmund. My husband is a huge Chelsea fan. We made a really big day out of it and it was so much fun. We had the best time. That was probably my favorite thing that we did the entire summer. And then there were two big milestones. One of them is that Maggie turned one, which is so sad for some reason. She still is a kitten, but like she's so big now. I used to be able to hold her in my hand. I love her so much. And then the other big milestone is that this channel got monetized, which is absolutely wild. It's still weird to me that 
anybody watches <laughs> this channel. Nonetheless, watches this channel for 4,000 hours. Every time someone says that they watch a video or comments or whatever, it, it blows my mind. So thank you to everyone who watches these videos. So let's finish it up with actual book stuff. So my favorite books of fall. Why do I keep saying that? My favorite books of summer. Oh my god. This was actually really hard. I read a lot of five-star books, like a lot of them. So I, I picked out ones that I don't think I read for videos. I have seven of them. I Look, I tried getting it down to a more round number, but I couldn't. So we're just going to go through these. These aren't ordered in any way. They're just the order in which I have them up on the computer. So first is the Green Creek series. So I read books two, three, and four over the summer. Books three and four are my absolute favorite. Book three, Heart Song, is one of the saddest books I've ever read. I don't know if I've ever cried so hard at a book before. It was emotionally damaging. And then Brother Song also made me sob. So those two in particular were fantastic. Um, I will eventually have a video of me reading Heart Song, but I don't think that video is coming until the end of January. Then we had The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. And I feel like this is an author that I have talked about quite a bit. And every single time I talk about it, I say the same thing, but Ashley Poston does really freaking cool and unique premises for her trade books. I think they are so well done. And this one in particular, the way that it was executed blew my mind because she plays with timelines in here. And the ability that authors have to pull off things like this, so outside of something that I could do, was done so well. I loved it. Seductions of a Psychopomp by Elsie Winters. This was the third book in the Boundland series following the Grim Reaper who was like the final of the roommates. And I loved this book. Just such a cute and adorable fantasy romance with a virgin hero and a marriage of convenience. I still think if you haven't read the series, you need to go do it because this is another one that is underrated and underread. Then I read Role Playing by Kathy Yardley, which was one that I was not expecting. I didn't see this book coming at all. I picked this up because it was in Amazon first and a lot of people were picking it up because of that. And so I just kind of read it on a whim. And this was really, really cute. We have a 50-year-old that is discovering his asexuality for the first time. I loved how unapologetically fierce Maggie was while still being soft and insecure at times. The characters were just so relatable and realistic and I was blown away and I need to read more from this author now. And then another new to me author, Wild Pitch by Kat Geraldo, was a recommendation by Heather. And shout out to Heather for recommending so many five-star books this summer. I read so many five-star books because of Heather and this was one of them. And the sequel to this is coming out in October and I am desperate. I am desperate for that book. This was an interracial baseball romance with a submissive hero, bisexual main characters. It was perfection. I love how diverse the series is. I love how sexually positive this series is. I really need to check out this author too to see what her backlist looks like. And then we had A Queen of Thieves and Chaos by K.A. Tucker, which is this chunky fantasy romance. This is the third book in her fantasy romance series. There's one more book coming out and this series is probably my favorite fantasy romance of all time right now big words, but I think I mean it. This was great. I just love how much this world and story has grown over these books and it was fantastic. I, I'm already excited to reread all three books for the fourth book, which I think we're getting next year. And then the last one is actually the last book that I finished and it just, it had to be mentioned. And that's Stars in Your Eyes by Case and Calendar, which is going to be a favorite book of mine of the year. This was fantastic. This was my first full length novel by this author. And I I need Kaysen to keep writing adult books because this was so good. This was an MM romance following these two actors who are struggling with family issues and some trauma from their past. One of them is going through a lot of PTSD, CPTSD due to extended trauma from his childhood. And it is them trying to work through it 
and fall in love along the way and it was everything. Oh, and it's one of the best audiobooks that I've listened to all year. This has a full cast because it is told in multimedia clips. There are chapters like from the main characters, but sprinkled throughout are all of these multimedia things. Some are newspaper articles, some are blog posts, some are tweets from people. There's one that is a blogger who writes fan fiction about them. It's just, it's so well done. So those are, I think, my favorites of summer. I am really, really sad to see summer go. I know that so many of you have been impatiently waiting for summer to end, and I am over here just mourning the loss of it. it. We did not have the hot summer, though, that the rest of you did. We may have gotten into the 90s a couple of times, and I just, I'm not ready for snow. I actually had a nightmare the other night that it was 14 degrees and I woke up all sad. Mentally not ready, not ready for summer to end. But I am really excited for all of the things that are coming this fall. Tomorrow I am going to be sharing some book recommendations for fall. So let me know what you guys are most excited for this season and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!